Oh, hey guys, let's learn how to use the timeline in Flash. I'm going to open a recent item. You may recognize this item from previous tutorials. I'm not really interested in animating this piece of wood here, so I'm going to hide that layer. I'm going to focus on the flame layer. Of course, I'm going to need to unlock it so that I can make edits to it. Now, to use the timeline, you'll see that it goes for a very long ways, up to 660 frames and beyond. I need to know a few hotkeys. I'm going to click out here around frame 9 and hit F5 on the keyboard. Now what this does is it extends the current frame to wherever it is that you're clicked out here on your timeline. If you click on that frame and hit F5, it just extends it even further. So F5 is basically add uh, more frames to my frame is, I guess, a way of saying it. Just add a hold to the frame, basically. Shift F5 shortens it. F6 creates a copy of the current frame, but then if I come in here and I make edits with my awesome possum art skills, yeah, and then I compare that to frame 3, I'm clicking and dragging on this red thing here. You can either click to select everything on the frame down on the timeline, but if you don't want to select anything, you can either click up here, or you can use the comma and the period to go one frame at a time, or you can use my handy dandy keyframe jumper, which goes from keyframe to keyframe, like so. Uh, for reference on how to install the keyframe jumper, see the previous tutorial. So. I don't really like this frame, so I'm going to hit Shift F6 when it's selected, and it's gone. If I want to add frames on both layers, I can drag and hit F5, and it will create frames on both layers. If I want to subtract frames from both layers, I can also select, drag, hit F5, and that works too. Now, F7 creates a blank keyframe. Shift F6 to get rid of it. Shift F7 brings up this menu. I never use this menu. I don't know why it's attached to Shift F7. I've never even taken time to read what it does. So if you know, leave a comment. Let me know, because I'd be curious. But not really curious, because I never took the time to look. So if I hit F7 a bunch of times on all these places, I can then click on each of these to see what's on it. So I'm going to put some stuff on this. Like a so. I'm going to nudge with my little greater than and less than, or comma and period. Go back and forth. And then I can check what's on the previous frame and the next frame, like so, with these little onion skin options. They look a little different in later versions of Flash, so keep an eye out for that. The key is that they are at the bottom of the timeline window somewhere. There's edit multiple frames, onion skin outlines, and regular onion skin. Right now I have regular onion skin turned on, so you're seeing the blue blob and the flame. Okay, enough on that. I can select all of these and hit Shift F6. And then I'm gonna create a new layer I'm going to lock my flame layer. I'm going to come over here, select my pressure sensitivity, and I'm going to create brush strokes. Outline this. Usually when I animate, I create a keyframe of kind of what I want my uh, effect to look like. And then from there, I go in and uh, animate all the other frames. But it's really uh, important that you don't animate from such a cleaned up drawing, so I actually want to hide that drawing and uh, pretend it never existed, at least for a little bit, until I go back to the cleanup phase, because I can work a lot faster by doing it this way. Okay, so I hit F7, 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 and F7, and because I've got onion skinning turned on, I have these brackets. I can adjust the width of the brackets by clicking and dragging on this little circle guy here, which is pretty nice. So, yeah, so I got my flame here. I want to do it in nine frames. Let's see, let's see how it goes. Okay, so if this circle is here, it's going to track 
upward. I don't want it to be that circle because that's like really slow. Plus, like, doesn't make, well, I don't know, maybe that'll be fine. So by the halfway point, this guy will be right there. Rotler, as they say in Utah, where I am from. And then maybe this is going to, like, flourish up into its own kind of thing that's going to, like, flick off or something, something like that. Meanwhile, down here, we've got a new kid on the block. These guys were so popular a while ago. Something. Now, if that's moving that far, then this would move about there. That would be gone. I don't know. It's going to be dead by the middle of this. Maybe I want... Maybe I want this to come like here. I'm thinking of like so many different things. I don't even know. I'm going to try to explain all this over time, but like I'm thinking of like asymmetry, right? So I don't want this to be the same across. That's why I like put it at an angle like that. I'm thinking of this curve here turning into something different. I'm thinking of this guy down here. I mean, I kind of want like a wobble to the flame. So like there's a big shape over here. So there's got to be like a competing big shape on this other side, right? Because it turns into a little shape by there, but at some point it's got to be big. Think big. Okay, so then it's coming up and now i got to in between this thing. Okay, so this guy turns into that. I don't know, maybe something like this. And let's just Let's just kill this guy. I mean, gosh, kill it already. Let's turn into that little flick. So this uh, shape here is turning into that little flicky shape up there. And then, um, so, well, that doesn't work. Because the bottom tip of it has to become that thing there. Oh my Gosh, effects are hard. All right, there we go. All right. And then this circles something like this down here. I don't know, it might look good, might not. We'll just find out, I guess. Ooh, and then this I had a plan for. So that's gotta be like, um, yeah, it's gotta be like a little, little loop-de-doop -loop coming up there. And this is cool. And apparently I get an accent when I end Heard burr. Okay, so here's a fun trick. I can copy this first frame and I can paste it right here. See? Yeah. That way, when I'm on this frame, I can see between them what this is going to look like. So I'll come in here, bring this down. Oh, geez. That's a common rookie mistake. You see what I did there? This frame is supposed to move up. This frame is down lower than the previous one. That's wrong. Deleted. It's supposed to move up. So, first off, um, great thing about Keyframe Jumper, by the way, is it loops around to the beginning. So, that's kind of handy. So we got this guy up here turning into, I guess, nothing, nothingness, meaningless existence. Yeah, that's right. This guy is supposed to turn into this dude. So this bottom curve here is supposed to come from this one. And this guy's floating off into oblivion. All right. So. That guy goes up there, and this one turns around up here. I'm just saying this one and that one a lot. I mean, it's okay. It's okay. Oh, yeah, that shape needs to become something. Didn't really think of that. Oh, gosh. I probably should have thought about that. This shape is supposed to come all the way up into this shape. Heavens to Betsy. 
All right. Um, don't float off into space. I need you. I need you to come to here. And this point needs to turn into this point. These two. And this one's in the middle. All right. Oh, this is this is good. This is shaping up into something. I'll tell you. I'll tell you that right now. It's promising. Real for sure. Real for sure promise. Stick around for the exciting conclusion to this effect. Right. Uh, yeah, sure, why not? <clears throat> I know exactly what I'm doing. You know, I feel like this would be interesting if it kind of did that and then kind of just let it go. Like, Frozen style, you know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna sing it. It's not gonna happen. And I just did this, just like, because it's just begging to just flick off into space. I just say, let me go. Let me go. All right. So this lump is essentially gonna come out and turn into that that dude while this lump I don't even know man it's going some it's going places it's like got to get all the way up there so yeah like like so I'm gonna bring this this on out because I like that timing better that this bump would be closer to that sooner than later yeah mm-hmm I'm feeling it would you look at that to just look at it. All right, um, you know I probably pushed that too far because I still have another frame extra over here that uh, timing reasons. You know what I mean. This has got to come into there, and so that this guy can do the thing, and it can come on up. And that timing is so close and tight; it's moving really slow at the top. Let's see if that is bad. It's probably bad. I don't like to judge, but that's probably bad. All right, and then these guys are coming on down, and then I'll let this flip off into space. And that's dead by now. All right, so remember I said Shift F5 to get rid of that frame, and then I can undo that. And to export, I just do Control Enter. Now. Uh, I can't really see what's going on because the, the orange fire is in the way. So I had that hidden, but what I want to do now is I want to right click it and turn it into a guide layer. And I'm going to turn the log into a guide layer too because I don't really need that either right now. So I got my flame doing something, but I don't know, maybe I'll, I'll fix it in another tutorial so it actually looks like pretty good, you know what I'm saying? But for now, I think you're good. I think you should know how to use the timeline. And uh, hope you learned something. <laughs>